Africa by Liesl. Over the next few minutes, I want you to join me on an audiovisual journey through Africa. I'll be showing you bits and pieces of things that I experienced whilst I was traveling through Africa. It will be the original sound in the background. I just wanted to show you that little and simple things in life can make this life worth living, interesting and worth experiencing, no matter how different they are from what we personally know. And welcome to the land of Thousand Hills, Rwanda. Today we are going to see how to prepare the African tea, which is typical tea here in Rwanda, as we grow cows, Inyambo. Cows with big horns, Inyambo. So now we are going to see how to make the African tea. And we start by showing up the ingredients we use while making the African tea. Here we have water, we have ginger, we have the tea masala, and we have here the cinnamon, as well as the tea leaves, the black tea, Rwanda tea. And of course we have milk. We are going to use one liter of milk to make the African tea. So here we go. We start boiling the milk. Karazim, karazim. We start boiling the milk and as long as the milk is boiled, we are going to add a little bit of water as it's tea. Karazim, yeah. Not the milk. Oh, good morning. Guys, I'm going to give you a very little test and it's about this beautiful fruit basket. Wait, before we do that, I want to introduce two other ones because this is your time to flourish. Can you name and guess what fruits are in this basket? So obviously they are three types of fruits in this basket and I'm leaving it up to you to figure out what they are. I'm not going to tell you. I might put it at the end of the video, but hey, this is my breakfast from Ruhungiri, Musanze. So let's go in a bit close. I'm going to show you that fruit again. There you go. And I think you should pretty much know everything else on the table. This is the curiosity here. So, morning guys. This is Musanze, or um, Ruhungeli as we call it. It's surrounded by a range of mountains. And I'm really hoping Ah, this crows. I'm really hoping I can uh, climb to Bisoke, the volcano, the crater lake. But I've gotten a mixed information yesterday and I'm still trying to find out if that's the truth or if maybe um, I can find a way to go climb it. Right now it's dry, so it would be the perfect weather for it. But anyways, I'm just walking around the city in the morning because Usually, there are less people and I can show you the environment. But the few that come out tend to stare like, oh, what is she doing? Um, <laughs> like probably you can see uh, in the background. Uh, so I'm gonna walk to a cafe and have a chat with them, see if they know more. And then I'm meeting the guy from the um, beach uh, resort where I'm gonna stay a night and then do the Twin Lakes hike. And then um, I'm hoping he should know more also. So we're going to go to the cafe. And these are just some side streets from where I was staying. So I wanted to check them out. Okay, do you see the volcano in the back? Or oh, the mountain? <laughs> what a crazy top. Okay, to So guys, right about here, we're 25 kilometers away from the Ugandan border and the Musanze Caves are that way, the National Park is that way. Still trying to figure out a way to go there. I'm gonna ask Big Bang and then the light's gone out. So you can see that cable literally, you know, slam the ground from the um, pole back there, the electric pole and across the street. So I'm in Megano and the lights have gone out in Megano. So something did kind of like explode, I guess, because it was a huge bang. <laughs> And they ran out of the kitchen and people are still passing under that wire. I guess because the power is caught, it's probably safe. 
I'm telling you, it's working. Whatever they're doing in Rwanda, it's definitely working. So approximately nine minutes after a slam down, they're here and they're fixing it. This would not happen anywhere else. I know very well. So I walked around the city this morning and what I love about it is that you have a lot of, you know, quaint guest houses like the one I'm in right now. And um, this one is really cool because they have like this arty thing going on, like you can see a walla behind me. And it's also attached to some art initiative, uh, was it Red Rocks or something? But I love that artworks and um, you have quite a number of these um, guest houses all over town and they're usually one story so it kind of like does not obstruct the background of the mountain range behind it so you're walking around you're like oh! you know so that's kind of cool um i obviously came here because the volcanoes national park is yeah in this area in this region and also the twin lakes i was hoping to do at least two hikes um in the volcanoes national park but it's proving to be very tricky because Here's the deal, they've got about five hikes, I think, and there's a $75 fee for uh, the hiking, but uh, all the hikes start at the same time, so it's not possible to do two hikes in a day. So I think it's rather expensive for, you know, to have to pay $75 just to do one hike. But here's the good thing. Because there are not a lot of tourists, if you do get to do the hike, you have a 60% chance of seeing the gorillas. But there's another thing to tackle. They need you to have a COVID test that is um, not older than 72 hours. So there's another probably $10 coming in if you do a rapid test. And then you have to get to the park. I'm still trying to figure out the logistics to get to the park. Good thing for a thing about today is it's not raining. It was raining yesterday and it is freaking cold. At least for me it's cold because it was 18 degrees during the day and like 14 at night. That in my definition is cold. Um, anyways, so I need to try and figure out that. But I have heard and I think this is proven to be true with the little research I'm doing uh, that uh, the national parks here are kind of geared towards a certain class of tourists, so high-end. But thankfully, like if you go to Rubavu or um, Karungi, there are loads of things that you can do that are not within a park management. You can do a lot of boat trips on Lake Kivu, you can uh, walk the Congo Nile Trail, and that's thankfully free. And uh, you can just walk around Karungi. It's such a beautiful city or town and you can kind of like navigate the different parts around the lake so that's that's a plus so you don't have to be super duper loaded to be able to enjoy that for now i'm going to try to do some stretch because i've just realized i must have done something really horribly back to my uh to my back in uganda because i'm still kind of suffering the consequences in my lower back so if i have the opportunity to do flow exercises and stretches I will take it and this is a good space so let's get into it. Guys, look at that. 
Those are huge, huge sunflowers. I'm going to try and get a picture under the biggest one. Let me go this way so you can see it. It's crazy. It's really crazy. I don't even know if it's natural. Well, let me try this. So I am trying the fufu version um, in Rwanda. And I asked for some spinach. Uh, so this is from cassava. So it's like basically like fufu, but it's not white like uh, in ours. And you get some sort of a tomato sauce. Um, not anything close to any of the Niger soups. Mm. Yeah, it's basically a tomato sauce. And it's just meat inside. I don't know what else is inside. Um, I would probably eat this more with rice or with yam than like swallow. But <laughs> you learn every day. say hello to the green maracuya um so the one in front is obviously not ripe and you can see that by the seeds and the one behind is ripe and i've never seen this fruit before so i've now seen two fruits in um, rwanda that i've never seen anywhere before the tree tomato and this green maracuya I do hope you've enjoyed this episode. Thank you very much for watching. Yours truly, Liesl81.